No matter how much natural talent you might have, and I'm not talking about myself here, to be a top-line Formula One driver, you have to be the total package. There's so much more to it than just car control. I'm guessing a lot of you enjoy Drive to Survive, as I do, and how we get an insight into what the F1 guys do to train, to prepare themselves for the pressure to perform every time they go on track. If you've made it to F1, make no mistake, you're the man. Even the guys we like to criticise, like these guys, they got there for a reason and they're still going to smoke you and me. Today we're at Focus Driver Training in Sydney and it's a really interesting story that I hope will give you some insight into the process of what it takes to be a top line racing driver. As Focus say, it's a holistic approach to driver training. Now I hope you remember Alex Ninovich from a year ago when we made a video here at Focus and a lot of good things have happened since then. We'll talk about that in a minute. It's clear what Alex's ambitions are. Like millions of teenagers around the world, he wants to push it as far as he can. You know what that is. And all the indications are that he does have the potential to do that. But potential doesn't mean a thing. The world is full of really talented boys and girls whose parents have invested everything in their kid's career and often some success, but then it comes to a grinding halt when the cash runs out. Now everybody dreams of being talent spotted by a big race team. Teams like Prema, High Tech, Alpine, Red Bull, or Roden Motorsport. So Roden, bless their little Kiwi hearts, find and nurture drivers through the ranks, like Liam Lawson, you've heard of him, and typically through Formula 4, Formula 3, Formula 2, and Roden currently has multiple drivers in each of those categories. Having won the F4 Championship last year, now Roden has chosen young Alex to step up. Mark, as you know, is Roden's driver coach, and he's been promoting and coaching Alex from the very start of his journey. Together with Ollie here at this fabulous facility, all part of the development team. Imagine that, at 17, you're an international professional racing car driver. Now the harsh reality is, if Roden's supporting you, there are expectations. They cut you some slack in your rookie year, but you have to perform. But if a driver doesn't end up on the podium, winning races, setting pole positions, and placing at the sharp end of the championship, there's no room for sentimentality here. Thanks for coming, see you later. So just imagine how heartbreaking it would be to have all that happening for you, around Europe to the best race tracks, and you're not even 18 years of age. And let's say it goes pretty well, but not quite as well as you hoped. And the next thing it's all history and you're back working at the family business or starting an apprenticeship. So it is a fantastic opportunity for Alex. But that's the reality for most young drivers who see themselves as an F1 driver. Now last year, Alex had a good showing in Spanish Formula 4 in his rookie year, but this year it's the prestigious Rocket British F4 Championship. We're already halfway through the season and Alex has popped home to Sydney from the UK, as you do, for a few days of coaching. What would you say was your, your best move of all year, all year? Have you made, done one out, take something outrageous around the outside where people just didn't expect that? Uh, uh, have you had a good one like that? I've got to think about it now. Um... There was one at Thruxton where I went around the outside of someone through Goodwood, which is like basically nearly a flat out turn. It crests and if you're not careful, you can end up on the grass so easily. I went around the outside of there and then I was getting a slipstream off the car in front and I just pulled straight past the car on the inside. That was quite a satisfying okay. moment. Who was that competitor that you went past? Did I think it was Jack. It was Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jack. <laughs> Yeah. All right, next round is Zandvoort in Holland. Yeah. Do you speak any Dutch? No, 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 I don't. No, okay. Well, I'll have to start on. learning some. Now, although it's a British series, the next round in a few weeks' time is at a new track, home of the Dutch Grand Prix, and if you remember where Daniel Ricciardo broke his wrist last year, ironically gave Liam a chance in the Alpha Tauri. So we need to learn the track. British F4 did already have one test day at Zandvoort, so this is not Alex's very first look at the track.
Now the simulator is accurate in ways you might not expect. If Alex can set a good lap time here, it should translate to real life, given the same track conditions and car setup. Fuel load and individual tyre pressures, temperatures, degradation, flat spots, vibration, of course they're all modelled and they have a big impact on performance and your lap times. Now Zandvoort is also very challenging because it's coastal and often has sand or salt accumulating at points on the circuit, so the grip levels can change quickly. Also, turns 3 and 14 are steeply banked, almost 20%, and this has a significant effect on tyre sidewalls. So there's a real art to tyre management, and if they're not warmed up evenly, it's easy to experience something like this. It does feel considerably uh, looser in the rear. Like you're making changes and you're seeing the result there? Correct. Yeah. So it's all correlated? Yeah, oh, 100%. So you've spent some time today making sure the car is as absolutely as realistic as possible. Yes. It was, it was a bit too good earlier it on. It was a bit too planted last, uh, when he first drove it. Mm. And, uh, which is also interesting from the, kid, the feedback of the kids that we have driving the same car over here. Mm. Um, the feedback is different to what Alex is commenting. And it's certainly a lot more nervous and looser on the rear in the UK. So mm. made a few extra changes for him just to make sure we don't lure him into a false sense of uh, reality. And uh, he goes out there in real life and bins it. So. Yeah. simulator allows the luxury of pushing beyond the car's limits in a way that's obviously too expensive to try in real life. But it doesn't take long for Alex to adjust and punch out smooth, consistent laps. 1 minute 37s, 36s, and then into the 35s, which is right on the pace. All right, that was good. Good job, mate. Well done. What's it called? Absolutely. Do what you reckon? Yeah, for me, into turn one, when I'm breaking at the 100 meter board, it's obviously... Mark and I will say that that's whenever, really flat, yeah. we're at the 75, okay. and that's why we kept like, losing the rear the way it is. Because as soon as I brought it back, the car felt a lot nicer. Yeah, did it, right? yeah you yeah. can feel that. Yeah. Yeah. And then that lap there, you were too late with not good pressure, and then just, the car's going to let go. Now, obviously, one of the main reasons you use the simulator is to learn your lines through the corners. Just for fun, on the right is some local guy who thinks he's a real hot shot. Max Fur stopping or something, setting his pole lap in the Dutch Formula One Grand Prix last year. He seems to know the track pretty well. Now it is a Formula One car, so I've had to slow it down to match Alex's pace in the F4 car. But compare their lines. Alex is doing pretty well. was building so well like yeah. the delta was just going minus three temps four temps five temps i was looking at mark and I'm like well this is on for you know 35 two 35 three whatever mm -hmm. 
which would have matched the best time that you said you've seen on a green tire mm -hmm. in real life. Mm -hmm. um, but then the, the way that the lap built, you just went into that last sector, a bit too hot through the right, so tried to carry a bit too much speed in, attacked it too much, then went wide around the left, dropped two tenths, mm -hmm. and then because of that, you tried to then gather that back up mm -hmm. in the last corner, went in there, then on the front left too hard, and then just dropped off the wheel. Yeah. Um, but that lap would have been really good. Mm -hmm. um, and then the rest of them were just, to be totally honest, were just a little bit messy. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. Still 10 minutes left of the session, so. 35 2. There ain't another set of green. <laughs> <laughs> put another no, no pressure. We'll put the second set of news on. We'll go Mate, you, you're going through tyres like nothing on earth. Who's, I was thinking, who's, who's paying for these? Oh. Yeah. So 35 2, that's what we're chasing. 35 2, I reckon that, yeah. that's optimum. Yeah, that's yeah, achievable. Yeah, yeah absolutely. We're nearly there. Yeah. We're nearly there. Now, just to show you how realistic the simulator is, Turn seven is a fast right-hander. It's tricky, and lots of drivers run wide on the exit. Now watch Alex practicing in real life at the same corner. It's one of those corners where you have to keep your momentum up. But as you can see, lots of these teenagers are having problems here. Good, it's nice. Off to a good start. Yep. Yeah. Delta's there, yep. Yeah. Green for good. Five. Nice, that's the power suit out of that. This is really nice. Oh, oh, under the way in. Oh, oh, oh dear. And that's that's, that's oh the dear. spot. That first lap was through turn three, four there. Mm, mm. It was my second push. Lap. Was your second push? But the first push lap was even faster. Was even faster, yeah. 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 As soon as I went through turn three, the out the right side tire hit the white line. Yes. yes it yeah. just went. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, you see. Oh, I dropped the rail. Tension's palpable, Mark. It's, 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 it's real, isn't it? So we just told him it's his last session of the day to Correct. put some pressure on him. Correct. No, well, the good thing about drivers like Alex is of this caliber is, you know, they put enough pressure on themselves. You don't need to tell them twice to go fast. That's three tenths up mm -hmm. on a 35. You just, carry, you just lost a little bit of time coming out of there. Mm -hmm. Cost you big time. The one after that as well. Mm -hmm. where we lost this... That mindset coming into the last corner when you know you've hooked it up yeah. and you know you've done the lap. Just remember, you've only got mm. you got one hand on the trophy, but not both hands on the trophy. <laughs> that's it. That's yeah, it. you know what I mean. That's just a more of a psychological thing. I, I know so. it's really easy as a driver to do that. I think I've done it. In fact, this is good. Yeah. But you're just not quite there yet, yeah. mm. and you just relax. Yeah, it's a corner where if you back if you back if it up a little bit too safe, you, yeah. you could drive off the track. Yeah. yeah. Now, for a race driver, obviously good reflexes are very important. You've probably seen this. Very place to be uh, behind. Oh racing my speed. goodness me! We're on board with Isaac Hadjar. You've got the LED boards. Oh my word, that was nearly horrible. Yes, terrifying, isn't it? So the next stop for Alex is the cognitive lab. People often say the brain's a muscle. Well, the brain isn't a muscle. It's mainly fat with carbs, protein, water, and a dash of salt. But it sure behaves like a muscle. If you exercise, it gets better. You can train to be smarter, quicker, more aware. Time up. 
453. What did I get last time? 365. Okay, that's a lot. So massive improvement. Okay. So we dropped um, quite a bit towards the end. You could just see as soon as that heart rate came up, lots of mistakes, lots of miss hits. You know, having been around motorsport 45 years, I thought I'd be pretty good at this. So I had a go. And you know what? I was crap. But Ollie, I'd love to come back and do a proper assessment for the channel of a 67 year old. Good job. Yeah, that was really good. That was very good. Okay, the next exercise. 7842. A test of Alex's multitasking ability combined with his vision skills. 7268. Keeping track of four moving objects in 3D space and it gets faster and harder. Instant headache. 6527. Now the vision from a formula car is nothing like you see on TV. It's terrible. You need to be able to keep track of all the competitors around you. So this is a great cognitive exercise for assessing and improving spatial awareness skills. 8246. 4536. Great job. Well done. 1247. Good job. As fast as we can, there's a glass screen so don't hit it too hard. Speed, 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 speed. If you think these cognitive tests look like fun, well they are. If you think they're easy, they definitely are not. And by the time Alex gets to this last one, where you've only got 0.2 of a second to hit the green lights, very, very hard. Here for only a short period, so you must react quickly. Okay, so the lights are up. Nice. <laughs> this is very impressive stuff. Keep your hands moving because sometimes your arms move and block the uh, okay. That's really hard. That's hard, though. That's really, really hard. hard. <laughs> you've got, you got quite a few, actually. A lot more than I thought you'd get, so that's really, really good. And you just missed about 50. <laughs> <laughs> What we're starting to see is that your peripheral vision... There are so many facets to this brain-hand-eye coordination thing that can be empirically measured and improved. Maybe the brain is a muscle. So I think you know what happens next. The gym. But not your typical gym conditioning session or heat acclimatisation in the sweat box. He's off to Holland, not to Singapore. The session starts gently enough, but Ollie's actually pushing Alex today to find his core strength limits. Just under a minute, I did 50. But obviously, once you're fatigued. Is he working hard enough, Ollie? He's, yeah, he's, uh, he's giving it his all, that's for sure. <laughs> the effort that he's putting into it is, uh, is remarkable. So, last one on the board now, and then we're doing our cardiovascular assessment. So, we're doing wall sits. So, great job, Alex. I know Ollie really pushed you. But as always, lots of room for improvement. Now, something interesting Alex, at 17 and a half, is slightly older than the average age of all drivers in this category this year. The youngest is just 15. So why so young and why parachute Alex into British Formula 4? Why that category? Well, the most obvious thing, F4 cars behave like Formula 1 cars. Wings, slicks, downforce, open wheelers. Secondly, everybody's driving the same type of car. 24 drivers, 8 teams, but they're all using the same chassis, engine and tyres. It comes down to driver skill and racecraft. Now Formula 1 watches Formula 4, but you don't make the leap from F4 to F1 just like that. If you've got the skills, it's still a five-year journey. If you're not a teenager, you've missed the boat. So let's look at the career of Oscar Piastri as an example. 
Oscar started racing go-karts at the age of 10. He turned professional at 13. At 15, he started racing the British Formula 4 Championship. That's younger than Alex was when he started in F4 last year. GP3, Formula Renault, Formula 3, Formula 2, and the rest is history as we know. And last weekend, a race winner in Formula 1. And probably he'll never have to work the checkout at Bunnings ever again. So now you understand why F4 is important. So how has Alex gone in the season so far? Very well. Five rounds already completed and 14 races. So far, Alex has had three pole positions, two fastest laps, two race wins, 10 podium finishes, including the last seven in a row. But right now he's a close second in the championship and there's one kid who's definitely the guy to beat with the very English name of Deegan Fairclough. Rotor Motorsport team and high tech team, the two teams at the top and you, obviously those two teams are the drivers that are in there, you wanna be in front of them. That, so who are the high tech drivers? We've got... Um, You've got Deegan, Reza Seaworthen and... Reza and Deegan. D Mika Abraham. So um, there was a bit of, how do I say it? Not fisty cuffs, but a bit of an argument earlier on with Deegan mm. uh, in the year. He gave you a bit of a hip and shoulders, and which actually looked quite scary. You nearly, to my mind, it looked like he could have easily barrel rolled a lot out of that. Yeah, it was very and, close. And I thought there might have been a penalty following that, but there mm. wasn't. Mm. I was uh, leading in race three, and then with one lap to go, lit coming onto the last lap and on the exit of the turn, Deegan was the in, on the inside of me, and then kind of. The room closed up quite quick and I was on the outside of him and we made contact and I came off second best. The car was quite damaged, nearly nearly rolled once I hit the gravel, which was quite scary. And then obviously I didn't finish the race and he finished first and it was a bit frustrating. It wasn't a nice move, you no. must have been totally pissed off. Yeah, I was, I was very, very angry and to be so close to getting the win and getting really good points, the race was finished and I didn't finish. and. That's how it goes, and the, the clerk, of course, put it down to a racing incident, which I was quite frustrated about, mm. and that was that, that was how it went. Were you able to put it behind you and sort of go and reset? Or? No, I, I, I put it behind me. I, I didn't think about it, so that's probably a good thing. And then as we, we went to Snedderton and I got pole position. Pole position, man. Alex Ninovich can convert that pole position into win. Here's how they line up. Alex Ninovich with Deegan Fairclough Championship leader alongside. It was such a good feeling to finally get my first pole position. Yep. And then that led on to a race one win and a race three win. And it was in race three where, where me and Deegan had a bit of an incident coming onto the, coming on, onto the straight after turn three. Mm -hmm. I went defensive, he went behind me and then tried pulling out and ended up on the grass. So. Mm -hmm. There was nothing I could have really done there, but obviously he made the mistake of going on the grass and it kind of finished his race and the stewards, the stewards put it straight, straight away to a racing incident. Yeah, yeah. No fault from me and sort of equaled itself out at Snet. Mm. Is he a bit of a hothead, that guy? Yeah, he definitely does get quite angry. Uh, and do you? No, I don't, I don't get much. I don't get, I don't get very angry, but... The Alex tactic, keep you cool. Yeah, you definitely, definitely need to keep cool. It's obviously doesn't look good on the team or you when when you get angry and people are watching you do this it doesn't put a very good name to you no, man, don't give me that I'll, you guys give me the strategy okay i'm trying to rescue myself let's talk about your team road and motorsport mm -hmm. so who are the drivers in in your team so in the team we've got me uh, abby pulling so she's racing in f1 academy and and the british f4 then you've got jack sherwood and james higgins mm. Abby can't be too bad. She's had a, a race win early on, didn't she? Yeah. That was a reverse grid race. That, but yeah, in the reverse grid race, she went from third or fourth on the grid to first and pulled away many seconds. So yeah, she did. She did a good job in that race, and yeah, she's she's been very fast in testing and pretty good. Clearly, you're you're all in fast cars. Yeah. Jack and James, fast cars, and you often find yourself beside them on track. But at the moment, we had a high tech one, two, three at Brands Hatch, are we looking at a road in one, two, three here? Um, how's the attitude change on track to off track with those guys? Um, yeah, yeah, everyone wants to beat each other and it sometimes does get quite tense and everyone, everyone sort of is in their zone and doesn't want to let too much, don't want to let too much friendly stuff get in the way of the racing on track and everyone in the team is very good and the cars are equal and 
it always puts us right together. And yeah, there's a few times where there's been some small incidents on the track, but a lot of the time it's hard, clean racing. And to have the whole team so competitive up the front, it's quite good for the team's championship as well. So if you happen to beat them on track in a race, are they all, oh, good on you, Alex, great job, or are they a bit dark that they didn't actually get you? A few times, yeah, there's been a few races where that's been the case, and yeah, after the race, everyone says good job to each other, and there's not really any sort of anger between the drivers no. because you... they're finished in front or behind, but yeah, we all, we all want to beat each other, so we're all going to be super competitive with each other and probably not, not be too friendly, like, if you weren't racing. And uh, the other teams at the track, are you you're friendly with the other guys, like the high tech guys, like Reza and, and uh, Deegan, or do you, do you hang out with them or not? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think they they are too friendly, and I don't think we show much friendliness to them as well. But okay. being but, being an arrival and being so close in the team's championship, and obviously you look at all the incidents that have happened over the over the year and past years, it's probably not the best idea to, <laughs> to be hanging out. Hey Mark, how come we've never reviewed this car? Yes, yeah, so we're going to do that, Stu. See you, mate. Hey guys. Well, what a great insight into what happens at Focus Driver Performance. And thanks again to Ollie. I'd like to know how slow I am these days, so I look forward to doing my own driver evaluation. If you'd like to see that, then leave a comment. But as you're still watching, I'm sure you'd like to know what happened at Zandvoort a few weeks later. Well, not bad, but not fantastic. Here's the really short version. Qualifying, not so great, way back in P10, the other rodent cars even further back. Race 1, appalling weather. Faircloth on pole, Ninovich in the 12 car starts P4, up to P3 on the first lap, up to P2 on the next lap, but can't get close to the lead. So Deegan wins and Alex P2. Race 2 is an epic fail for everyone. Alex starts in P3, the red lights come on, then they go out for a moment, then they come straight back on again. Some cars go, some cars don't. This kind of thing really should not happen at this level of motorsport. There's a lot of damage, but the rodent cars are okay. So the reverse grid race doesn't happen on Saturday at all, as so many cars need to be fixed. Reschedule for Sunday morning, and thankfully the weather is better. Alex starts again on P3, and Abby Pulling is on pole. It doesn't stay that way for long, as Alex jumps straight to the lead. Deegan's way back in P12, but by the second lap he's charged up to P4, and shortly after, P3. And that's the way it stays. So Alex wins, Abby second, and Deegan third. Of course Alex is happy to win, but Deegan gets quite a few points for overtaking nine cars. That's the way it works in reverse grid races. Sunday afternoon, race three is in the original qualifying order. Deegan's on pole, Alex way back in P10, and the other rodent cars even further back. It seems to me their wet weather qualifying setup was not quite right. But Alex is on a mission, passing seven cars up to P3 before they get to half distance. Then there's a big shunt in the midfield, a long delay, and on the restart, only a couple of minutes to go, and Alex is starting nice and close to Deegan. But on the restart, he gets his front wing tagged by someone, and he has to pit, so game over. So, Zandvoort. Deegan wins two races, and Alex wins one. Can't really complain about that, except that the points gap to Deegan has widened a little bit more. But we've still got four rounds to go, and 12 races, Maybe even 13, because there's one that got cancelled where Alex was meant to be on pole. So it's still within reach for Alex. And Roden is close to high tech in the Manufacturers' Championship as well. So that's on the cards too. Very exciting. So now you, gentle viewer, have someone to cheer for. Focus driver performance, Rocket British F4, you can watch it on YouTube, Roden Motorsport, Alex Ninovich. Thanks for watching and see you next time. I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. Oh hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.